Hey guys, I'm Kay. Today I'm going to be doing a video again based on a viewer request. And the request I got was about overcoming trauma. So let me preface this video by saying, A, I am not a medical provider, I am not a therapist, I am a life coach, but I am not somebody dispensing medical advice. So huge caveat here. And that should be taken for all of my videos as well. Now that said, um, we all, all of us, have experienced tremendous trauma in our life in a very different ways, physical, emotional, sexual, physical, whatever, psychic. Um, like for myself, I was bullied relentlessly as a kid. Like there wasn't a day I didn't come home from school in tears, especially sixth through eighth grade. Um, I was picked on every passing period for being queer, or being effeminate or being weird. Um, I'm amazed looking back that I never felt suicidal because I should have based on what I endured. Um, I had huge trauma when I was kicked out of my ashram, when the person who had vowed to love and protect me and be my guru and reincarnate with me after lifetime, however many lifetimes I need till I got enlightenment, when he sent me a text message saying, I'm no longer your teacher, get out, I never want to see you again, don't ever talk to anybody else here. Uh, without asking me what was going on or what was wrong or, uh, you know, that there was this nefarious stuff going on of, like, people trying to hurt me. Like, that was traumatic. Um, some of the things some of my partners have done, previous boyfriends or lovers have done, have been traumatic. Um, I spent seven years living in an ashram where the person who ran my specific center was emotionally abusive and manipulative and hurt me time and again. There have been many traumas in my life and I'm still coping with many of them and I just say this to say hey I'm not better I'm not I don't have it all figured out I'm not somebody who's lived a, an easy life or a pristine life like there's been a lot of a lot of shit for me um, as there is for you I know right because all of us have our stories and they're all valid and they're all part of who we are and I don't know if we ever fully overcome trauma so much as we learn how to manage it. I watched a TED talk not too long ago called, we don't overcome grief, we move on with it. And I think it's very similar because these stories never just disappear. We don't like vanquish them. We don't, you know, jump on our white horse and armor up with our lance and our shield and vanquish them, destroy them. They live with us. They are part of our narrative. Now that said, I think there are important things we need to do. One is you can't outrun pain. If you think you can just go faster or party harder or be loud enough that you don't have to listen, it, it doesn't work. Your pain will always be there. And until you can make friends with it, as hard as that is to say, until you can sit with that pain, hear what it has to say, perhaps under the guidance of a licensed therapist, until you can sit with your pain and hear it and be with it and not try to fade it or fix it or hide it, to quote Orion Mountain Dreamer, it will always haunt you. So you have to become friends with the suffering. You have to be willing to be there with it. Because if you're constantly trying to not or deny it, it's crazy making. So one is you have to sit with pain. The next thing is you have to forgive. First, you have to forgive yourself because whether we realize it or not, there's always this element of, I should have done differently. I should have made a different choice. I shouldn't have walked down that alleyway. I should have stood up for myself better. I should have protected myself more. I should have said no, I should have blank. But that's bullshit. We did what we could at that time. And so you need to forgive yourself. Forgive yourself first and foremost. And then as difficult as it is, forgive everybody else. Because even if it felt like they were intentionally trying to hurt you, that they were intentionally going after you, they weren't. I mean, yes, they might have, but it really was about them. It was about their own pain, their own discomfort, their own dissatisfaction, and sharing that pain, acting out on it, wanting some sort of release or trying to make things better for themselves in a very misguided way, perhaps, most likely. But nothing is ever about us. It never is about us. Even when it feels intentionally about us, it isn't. It's about them. And everything in life that everyone does is about themselves. So forgive them, as hard as that is. 
bless them as hard as that is, love them as hard as that is. And I know many of you probably think I'm never going to forgive that person who raped me or murdered my cat or backstabbed me. I'm never going to love them. But if you take the yogic view, the tantric view of saying everything that exists is God and there is nothing good or bad and there's no separation between me and this plant and my dog and my neighbor, we are all one then nothing's inherently evil. And by hating somebody else, all you're really doing is hating yourself. And so it can be a long and difficult road to forgiveness. Heck, that, that woman, her name, I won't say her name, maybe I'll say her name at some point, um, who ran my ashram, I still have a lot of anger towards her. I still have a lot of fucking resentment. I have a lot of pain around what she did to me. I'm not there yet. I hope someday to be, but I do my best. I still try to send out that love and that blessing and that forgiveness, and am I there yet? No, I'm not fully healed. But I do my best. And I recognize that time does make things better. It doesn't always feel that way, but time will make things better. And I also personally, that's the blessing of having multiple lifetimes, if you believe in reincarnation. Like well, all these tech entrepreneurs who want to live to be 500 or be immortal, I'm like, well, I like the reset button every 80 years. I like having getting to consciously forget about all this shit that happened, because I'm still going to get those lessons. The karma is still there. The imprints on my psychic body are still there. But I don't want to have to remember all the nuances of she did this and he did that, and I was hurt by so-and-so. I want to be able to let those things go. And I actually extend that even to, into this lifetime where sometimes I'll actually imagine that because I think it's true that we live many lifetimes within one lifespan. That I look back at my time at the ashram as almost a previous life. I look back on my childhood, my difficulty in school as being a previous life and think, wow, what would it be like if I had awareness of the lifetime before this chronological lifetime? Could I see this as being the same thing that I'm no longer in the ashram, I'm no longer in those childhood experiences. I remember them, I'm connected with them, but it's not my lifetime. I am now in a different life. And that sometimes gives me a little more space to heal and move on. But ultimately, if you believe in karma, every karma has to be experienced unless you burn them up in the fires of meditation. And not all karma can be burned up. Some of it has to be experienced. So you will deal with it when you deal with it and you will come to terms with it when you come to terms with it. And I think that this is one of the more empowering ideas that I've gained from my tantric yoga background is this idea that everything major I mean everything, but especially everything major in our life that happens is karmic. Meaning we needed that lesson based on our previous actions. We needed that to grow and to come into harmony. So if something really traumatic occurred, there's something we needed to learn from it and it was in response to something else we've done. And so what can we learn? How can we move on? How can we take that lesson and go and grow with it so that way we don't have to repeat that lesson again in the future? And there's an empowerment that comes from thinking, this is based on my karma. It's not just something that happened to me. It's a lesson I needed because of something I did in the past that maybe I'm not even remembering. But it's fair. Because I think that's what eats away at a lot of us is the feeling of unjustness, of trauma. I didn't deserve this. I'm a good person. Yeah, you might be a good person now. But five lifetimes ago when you beheaded people, maybe you weren't. So I hope those are some useful tools or things that I work on. Again, I'm not perfect. And again, this is not medical advice, but you know, we all have our trauma that we have to deal with. And hopefully this is helpful. Um, I talk about this in my upcoming book, Journey to the Ecstatic Self. Please check it out. I'm Kay. This is Ecstatic Self. Please like, subscribe, share it with someone if you feel so inclined. Namaste.